Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to the Cornerstone Builder. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's episode, we are going to take a look at how to create full width right or full width left content layouts like we have here. In this case, we have a hero split where our media on the right hand side extends the full width of our screen here while the content on the left hand side, our headline and our body copy here stay in line with our global container. As you'll see, as I scroll up to our logo here, which this nav is respecting our global container everything is in line with that logo and as you'll see we have a standard row with four columns down here which respects our global container as well and the g from get started and the q from quickly here fall directly in line with that now the great thing about what we're going to look at here today is this can also be reversed so you could do a text right media content left layout like this here and then it can also be played around with if you didn't want it to be so much of a hero section but more of a general layout you could do something like this here where we have all of the content left and all of the media right extending to the edge of the screen or you could go with a nice alternating mode as well where we have our full width content right full width content left full width content right left and so on and as I mentioned the great thing about this is that it always falls in line even our content right here always falls in line with our global container now this is actually super easy to achieve you just simply need to know where to look to do this so without further ado let's dive in so here we are in Cornerstone, and we are actually going to start from scratch with a new section here. Now within this section, you could use something like the CSS grid element, but we are going to keep things super simple by simply leveraging rows and columns. So we first need to begin by figuring out what the balance of our columns is gonna be. Now I want this to closely match what we have going on down here where our media is quite large and our text is smaller. So that might be something like this here. Now you'll notice on this row, by default, we have global container selected. And what that means is that this row matches whatever our global settings are for that container. And so you'll notice by default, it is automatically in line with our logo and our navigation above it. And if we were to get rid of section two here, it's also in line with any other content on the page that is respecting that global container as well. So where are those settings for global width? Well, if we come over to our global options here, you'll notice that by default, Cornerstone uses a site width of 88% and a max width of 1200 pixels. And what that basically means is that once we get above 1200 pixels, this no longer will grow. So if we were using a screen that was 3000 pixels, you'll notice this is all still in line here. If we took this up to 1600 pixels, you'll notice it all stretches to 1600 pixels wide now, but we'll go ahead and leave this at 1200 because that is the default that Cornerstone uses on any new install. So we know that our row here right now has a global container of 1200 pixels. Let's go ahead and add some content in there now. On column two here, let's go ahead and set our HTML tag to figure because there's gonna be an image inside of this. We'll then click on our advanced toggle and set our background lower layer to the image element. And we'll pop some content in there with this little coffee beverage here. And we're going to go ahead and choose a minimum height on this. So maybe we want this to be a large hero section. So we choose something like a minimum height of 800 pixels. And I think that's looking pretty good. Now in our left column here, let's go ahead and add a headline. And then we'll also add some body copy here. And we'll add just a little bit of design here. We'll make our headline bold and two M so it sort of stands out. And then on our column, I also want to enable Flexbox. I want there to be a vertical gap of one M just to space things out a little bit. And then I want my vertical positioning to be center so that it is centered with the image. Now this part is opinionated and is totally up to what you're trying to achieve with your design, but you can kind of see how things are coming together. This is a good layout, but we want our media to extend the full width of the screen. So the first thing that we're gonna do is make sure that we have that parent row container selected and scroll down to where we have our global container set. First and foremost, we need to disable our global container, which now stretches our row the full width, both left and right. But we don't want our text to be touching the left hand side here we want it to be in line with our logo and other content on the page so you might think well i'll just come in here and under padding i'll add uh five m's and what does that look like not quite i'll add 10 m's what does that look like uh, that's that's pretty close the problem is as this scales you'll notice it's now way off and you could try to manually adjust but that's pretty tedious so what do we do there well let's go ahead and set this back to zero instead of setting padding on our column let's jump back up to the parent row container and scroll down to margin 
we'll go ahead and enable our margin. And in the case of this layout that we're going for here, we want margin on the left hand side. Now, what we're gonna do is actually leverage our global 88% site width and our site max of 1200 pixels and create a little calc statement here. So let's scroll back down to our left margin and we're going to type in calc and then two parentheses, 100% minus minimum of 88% comma 1200 pixels, two more parentheses, and then we wanna divide that by two and end our parentheses. And immediately you'll notice something is taking shape. So we have our site max width set to 88%, which leaves 12% of margin when we're using our global container. Half of 12 is six, which means that typically there's around 6% of margin over here and over here. So you could just use 6% if you wanted, but this calc allows you to get in and adjust this pretty easily. So what this is doing is figuring out 88% with a max width of 1200 pixels divided by two, which gives you 6%. So now as we scale, things look nice. When we get up to something like 3000 pixel screens, it's still falls in line with our logo. So that is all looking great. Let's go ahead and bring this back down. Now, what we wanna do is make sure this scales all the way down to mobile devices. Well, you probably don't need your full width left, full width right on mobile devices. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come down to our laptop size. That's looking great. Our tablet size, now we're getting a little bit squished. So let's change our layout to one column but you'll notice this is now still on the right hand side. And maybe that's the design you're going for, but if it's not, we simply add some responsive calc in here as well to create a quasi global container. So we're gonna leave our left as is, and now we'll jump into our right and on the tablet size, we'll change this from auto to that same calc statement. And now it's got matching margin on both ends. And as we scroll down, that's all looking great. Now, if this image is a little too large, you could adjust that for mobile as well. You could come in here and say, hey, when we get down to tablet, it should only be 400 pixels and so on and so forth so now we have 800 800 go down into this vertical and it's 400 pixels 400 pixels 400 pixels and i think that's looking great now the best part about this is that once you have this done you can reuse this as much as you want so let's create another section here we'll just duplicate this down below and what we want to do here is the opposite we want the media to be on the left side so we're going to inspect our row and we are going to in my case click reverse because i still want this text to be on the top when we're on mobile screen sizes so i'm going to click reverse i'm going to scroll down and i'm going to change our left to auto and I can still put in our responsive size here at tablet. And on the right hand side, we're going to change this to our calc statement. And we want that to be the calc statement all the way through. And there you have it. We now have a hero full width right or a hero full width left. Now there is so much that you can take here and use when implementing into your designs, but hopefully this scratches the surface for you and gets the gears turning. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful and I will see you guys in the next video. Happy building.